Welcome back. In uh, the previous lecture, we defined the Lebesgue measure on 0 1, right? the uniform probability measure on 0 1, which is an uncountable sample space. We also defined on the real line the Lebesgue measure, which uh, formalizes the notion of length. Right? So, these two, uh, so, these two measures are, so the Lebesgue measure on 0 1 is a probability measure and the Lebesgue measure on R is not a probability measure, it is just it is an infinite measure and both these are defined on the corresponding Borel sigma algebras on 0 1 or the real line, which are generated by open intervals. Uh, today, we will consider another uncountable sample space. Uh, uh, this model is called the infinite coin toss model. In this case, uh, the sample space is the uncountable set 0 1 power infinity right so this corresponds to uh, so each elementary outcome corresponds to an infinite coin toss all right so each little omega so if you take a little omega in omega uh, it will be of the form omega 1 omega 2 dot, dot right so this is, these are bits so each elementary outcome is a infinite binary string Right, and we know that by Cantor's argument, we know that this is a uncountable sample space. So essentially, what I'm doing is calling head as zero and tail as one. Right. So this is an uncountable sample space, and we want to do, we want to assign a probability measure on this uncountable sample space. And you know that because the sample space is uncountable, if if you consider all possible subsets of this omega, two power two power omega, is too large a sigma algebra to uh, assign uh, assign meaningful probability measures on. So we have to again settle for some smaller sigma algebra, only consisting of uh, those subsets of omega which are in some sense interest of interest to us. And then we will try and uh, and then what we will do is once we define an appropriate sigma algebra on omega, we will assign a probability measure. What is what we like to be a uniform probability measure on this omega? Right. Ideally, what we want is that all no particular string being preferred over any other particular string. Right. That is the kind of we want intuitively we want an uniform measure on the space. Right. So, that is what we are building towards. Okay. So, this is also a very canonical uh, probability uncountable probability space. Okay. And in some sense, you can prove that what I am going to say is uh, has very close correspondence to the Borel measure on Borel sigma algebra and Lebesgue measure on. 0 1 okay if you write it as binary strings right so it's it's fairly close to what we have done but because it's in the language of coin tosses uh, the flavor is a little different okay okay so uh, so far okay so you have each outcome is a infinite binary string all right okay uh, so in this, now the question arises: We have to put a sigma algebra on this, right? And uh, as I said, if you put two power omega, it's too large, right? It's too complicated. So, um, so what I want to do is first start off with some collection of subsets which allows me to describe the outcome of, let's say, the first n tosses. All right. Start with a finite uh, finite set of tosses. So, let me say that f n, uh, so this is going to be a collection uh, of subsets of omega whose occurrence can be decided by looking at the first n tosses ok. 
okay so i have not really called it an event note i have only called it a subset of omega right i have not yet built my sigma algebra on this so i have not i have deliberately avoided calling it the collection of events right because by event i mean something very precise right i mean f measurable sets so this fn consists of so so fn consists of collections of subsets of omega right omega itself is all these binary strings infinite binary strings and all possible you you take a certain collection of subsets of omega whose occurrence or non occurrence can be decided based only on the first n outcome n first first n coin tosses of any outcome right so by this i mean so if i want to ask let us say an example uh, let me see so i want let's say i am interested in whether or not uh, the so for example i am going to look at at least two heads in the first 10 tosses okay this is something i am interested in let us say i want to know if there are at least two heads in the first so i have an elementary outcome which has an infinite bit string okay i am looking at the first 10 bits and asking if there are at least two heads in it correct so this is a, so if you call this event some uh, e or something then e is an element of f10 correct because i can decide whether e occurs or not by looking at the first 10 tosses right so this is what i'm looking this is what fn contains right it contains all those subsets of omega whose occurrence or non occurrence can be decided for certain by looking at only the first 10 tosses okay so this is a a uh, little bit of an english definition i'll give a little more of a formal definition now uh, so one thing that is immediately clear is that uh, something that can be decided in 10 tosses can also be decided in 11 tosses right so if some e is an element of fn it's necessarily an element of fn plus 1 fn plus 2 and so on so if you can call whether an event occurred or not in 10 tosses you can do so in 20 tosses no big deal right so these are all nested right so i will write that down so you can so so this is easy to show claim fn is contained in fm for all n less than or equal to m right this is very easy okay so this is so i've defined fn in a certain in a certain colloquial kind of a way so the correct way to define fn mathematically is to say that an e a subset uh, so let's say e belongs to fn okay if the n first n bits follow a certain conditions right let's say in this case the condition was two heads at least two heads out of uh 10 tosses right so i am essentially looking at the first n bits and i am mandating that to be a certain particular subset of the 2 power n possibilities in the first 10 tosses right so more formally i think you will understand what i'm going to say now so if you want to write this more formally we will say that a belongs to fn if there exists some a i will i will write a superscript n that is a subset of 0 1 power n such that a equals the set of all omega for which 
omega 1 omega 2 dot dot omega n if you look at the first n bits here this is in this a n. So, is this clear? So, I am say this a index by I am superscripting by n. So, this is a subset of 0 1 power n right. So, 0 n power n gives you all possibilities for the first n bits right, but I am mandating that the first n bits of my set of interest should be a fixed subset of 0 1 power n. So, it should have a certain property right. For example, in this particular example the first the a n consists of those n bit patterns uh, in which the at least there are two heads in the first 10. So, you should look at 10 n equal to 10 and say that you look at in a superscript 10 will include all those patterns in which there are at least two zeros in the first 10 right. So, essentially this captures the property of the first n bits that I want to decide whether it occurred or not this is okay. Actually this is all this is very simple stuff I am, I am couching it in a certain notation to be formal. Uh, is I, sup I suppose this is clear. So, A I say so this is the definition of so I am saying that A belongs to F n if there exists some the first n bits have a certain property right. You can look at this A n as a subset of 0 1 power n that satisfies the property I want for the first n bits ok. So, remember this A is an element of omega see A is this A is not an element of omega A is a subset of omega. Uh, for which the coin tosses satisfy the a certain property for the first n bits ok. So, for example, uh, so if let me take another example. So, if I want to decide whether my third toss is a head ok, I want to decide if my third toss is a head ok. So, it is an element of f 3 or f 4 f 5 everything right. So, let us say f 3. So, we say that f 3, so it is an element of f 3 right. So, we will say a 3 will consist of the first 3 bits in which the third bit alone is a head, the other 2 can be anything right. There will be so how many possibilities? 4 possibilities right. The third bit is fixed as head, the first 2 can be anything. So, this a superscript 3 will consist of those 4, four strings of triple triple bit triples right 3 bits ok. So, is this clear? So, it is very simple stuff I actually couched it in a certain notation, but I hope this will be clear ok. So, what do I really want? So, I want to eventually say I want to eventually assign some uniform probability measure right. So, ideally I would like to say that uh, as a particular n bit pattern should have a probability 1 by 2 power n right that is what I want to say. So, I want to say that each uh, bit being 0 or 1 should be probability half and some any string of a particular string of n bits should have probability 1 by 2 power n right that is what I want to say right. But on the other hand I have to put a proper sigma algebra on it and do it formally right that is what we are building towards. Now, what you can show under the claim f n is a sigma algebra you can show this ok to try this as a homework. So, f n the set of all events whose occurrence or non occurrence can be uh, decided in at most n tosses right uh, is a sigma algebra ok you can prove it ok try this as a homework. Now, given that f n is already a sigma algebra one might be tempted to say that my measurable space should be omega comma f n right. So, if I take a big n right let us say I take n equal to some million right. So, I take some very big n and I say omega comma f n is going to be my sigma algebra. It is a valid measurable space. So, I can put some probability measure on it to say that any n bit pattern has probability 1 by 2 power n right the problem with doing that. So, if you take so, if we take 
let us say omega comma f n as a measurable space uh, so elements or sorry subsets uh, so elements of f m for m greater than or equal to n cannot be assigned probability measures right so what happens so if even if you take n equal to million or oh, if i want to answer the question what is uh, whether my million plus one toss is ahead or not i'll immediately cannot answer it right so no matter what n you take if you take fn as your sigma algebra i will immediately ask you a question about oh how about my n plus 1th bit or oh, is my n plus 1th bit head or or you know some question about something beyond n right so then you will not be able to answer it because i am only taking events in well so elements of fn as uh, my measurable sets right so this is a little bit of a problem right this is a sigma algebra there is no problem but it is not a nice enough sigma algebra, it is not a rich enough sigma algebra to help us characterize events beyond n, nth coin toss, right? Occurrences beyond the nth coin toss, right? So, is this clear? Okay. So, we have to do something else, right? So, we have to look beyond these finite horizons, right? So, we, we do the following we define. So, let us define define f 0 equal to union i equals 1 through infinity f i. Okay. You know I mean maybe I should actually write as I keep saying no maybe I should just write that is better notation. They keep saying i belongs to n f i the same thing right now you are what what are you doing you are unioning all the all the sigma algebras okay so f n consists of those subsets so f n is the collection of those subsets of omega whose occurrences can be decided in n coin tosses right so when will this so this is a this is another collection of this is also a collection of subsets of omega what kind of elements will it have hmm? it will contain all those subsets of uh, omega whose occurrences can be decide who uh, whose occurrence or non occurrence can be decided in no see i have i have union over all i Countable number. Countable number. See, it consists of all those. So this is something you have to understand. F not consists of all those subsets of omega whose occurrence can be decided in some finite number of tosses. Okay. So why do I say that? So it looks as though it should. You know, I, I deliberately avoided putting infinity in order to not confuse you. I equal to one to infinity. I erased it and put I belongs to n, right? So that you don't think of it as f infinity or some such thing. There's no f infinity, right? F n is those those subsets which can be decided in n coin tosses. So if so, let's think of it this way: if a subset is contained in f not, it must be contained in one of the f i's for some i. Right, so it must be decided in some finite i number of tosses. So it's not something that can be decided in some infinite tosses. No, right? So f not consists. So you should probably write this down. F not consists of so so consists of all. 
subsets of omega which can be decided in in some finite number of tosses. So, this is the important bit in some finite number of tosses. Yes. Uh, we uh, take a bit of like uh, intersection like this. Yeah. But that time it's the same interpretation, right? It is the so if you intersect over a collection uh, index index, it's the set of all elements contained in all the sets. Or if it's a union, it should be contained in at least one of the indices. So that one, the like there, if it was just finite, still there will be a even smaller element which is not contained in B plus one by B minus one. So, yeah, no, I think I think you are confusing things that are not related. So, let us just clarify this first. Okay? So, I want to make sure that this is clear in everybody is mind. Uh, so, if so f naught is some collection of subsets of omega, right? we want to we want to know what kind of subsets are in this f naught. Okay? I am saying that if some subset is an f naught, let us say if some subset a is an f naught, then it must exist in at least one of the a i's. But you know that see these f i's are also nested, nested increasing. So, if it is so it must be in one of the f i's let us say if it is let us say it is in f j then it will be in f j, f j plus 1, f j plus 2 and so on that is because of the nested structure. So, it consists of all those subsets of omega whose occurrence can be decided in some finite j number of tosses, but that j can be a million or a billion it does not matter right that j cannot the j can be as large as you want, but you should be able to call that event in some finite number of tosses it can be very large right as an example of something if i ask you if the if the millionth bit to the 2 millionth bit are all heads that is a subset in f naught because i can call it looking at the first 2 million bits correct can somebody think of an example of something that is not contained in f naught. So, actually very, very easy all heads. all heads all heads right this whether my string is all heads which is all zeros cannot be called looking at f naught correct because f naught consists of those events which can be called in some finite number of tosses, but whether it is all heads I have to I can never stop looking at it beyond a point right I mean I have to look at everything right. So, an example of uh, something that is not contained in f naught is whether my sequence is all the all head sequence or if I want to answer if all my odd tosses are tails first toss third toss fifth so if they are all tails that is what I want to know that is also not contained in f naught correct is that clear. So, good uh, now I want to know what is so this f naught I, I hope everybody understands f naught right. So, now I want to know what kind of an object this f naught is see these f i's are all sigma algebras, but we had to move away from it because it only gives a finite characterization of the first n bits f n gives only a characterization of the n bits. So, we had to move away from it now we have come up with some object f naught which consists of those subsets which can be decided in a finite number of tosses any finite number of tosses. Now, what kind of an object is f naught is the question ok. See if this were an intersection we know that intersection of sigma algebras is always a sigma algebra but union of sigma algebras need not be a sigma algebra right it is not true. So, in fact it, it turns out that f naught is not a sigma algebra ok, but it is a algebra you can prove that it is an algebra ok it is closed under finite unions. 
So, by which what I mean is that if I have one subset whose occurrence can be called in let us say i tosses and I have another another subset which whose occurrence can be called in j tosses with let us say j bigger than i then the union of the two can be called in the bigger of the two j tosses again right. So, it is you can say that it is closed under finite unions. Okay, but you can also show that it is not closed under countable union, countably infinite unions. Okay, so here I go. I will put that down. So, we can show that f naught is an algebra and then we can show that f naught is not a sigma algebra. So, this I will leave as a homework this is just chasing up all the definitions right Ch chasing up the definition of an algebra. Can somebody tell why f naught is not a sigma algebra? <coughs> I just gave an example actually right or let us say odd tosses right. So, let me say for example, that let. So, I am just going to prove 2 ok. I am going to prove that it is not a sigma algebra proof of 2 in order to prove that it is not a sigma algebra I can show an I can produce an example where it is not closed under countable unions it is closed under finite unions you will show ok. Let A i be the event that the ith toss is a head ok i throws is a 0. Then uh, and let E equal to uh, the event. So, be the event I should not really say event right <laughs> you know why it is not an event right I have not yet defined the sigma algebra I should say be the su subset uh, subset of omega such that. So, for example, A 2 will consist of all those coin tosses all those infinite bit strings in which the second string is a head right. Similarly, A 10 will consist of all those strings for which the tenth is a uh, head right. So, I want to know I want to consider the following E equal to uh, subset of omega such that let us say all let us say all even all even index tosses are heads ok. Fine. So, A i so you will know that A i belongs to what f i right a is clearly an element of f i because I can call it an i tosses f i implies a i is a element of f naught for all i correct agreed. So, a is an element of f i Therefore, A must be an element of F naught because if your A is in even one of the F i's then it will be in F naught right. So, this much is clear. So, after all A i is whether the ith toss is a head right it can be decided in finitely many coin tosses, but I am claiming that my E. So, I can define my E as 
a countable union of the AIs, isn't it? Or Carol intersection probably, isn't it? True or no? So if I write E, I can write E. Note that E equal to intersection AI. Uh, I is equal to 2, 4, 6 dot dot dot. Right, I am intersecting all the even index AIs. So, AI is the corresponds to the ith bit being heads. I want all even index tosses to be heads, right. So, which means E must be the intersection of all these AIs where the index runs over only the even numbers. So, if you want all your tosses to be heads, you will say i equal to 1 through i, I belongs to n, right, for example. So, is this clear? Right, I am just mandating that all my even tosses are heads. So, this is, so these are all elements of F naught, right, but E is not an element of F naught. So, A i belongs to F naught, E is not an element of F naught implies F naught is not a sigma algebra, correct. Everybody with me? So, I have interest, so I have what I have argued here is for each i. A i is an F naught, because whether the ith, ith toss is a head, I can decide in finite number of tosses, correct, which is what F naught is. But E says all my even index tosses must be heads, and that is clearly not an element of F naught, because F naught only consists of those subsets which are decidable in finitely many tosses, and I cannot decide E in finitely many tosses. But E is a countable intersection of elements of F naught. Correct. So, you see the proof. So, here is yet another example of an algebra which is not a sigma algebra. So, just th think about this a little bit here. I mean, I guess it is a little bit easier on the intervals and so on, right. So, this is a little, I am doing this specifically to make you think about these kind of sample spaces as well, okay. Is okay. So, my F naught is an algebra, but it is not a sigma algebra, okay. But there is something nice about an algebra as well, right. Yesterday we stated a theorem that says if I tell you the measure on an algebra, some pseudo measure on an algebra, then I can extend it under certain, certain circumstances. So, if I tell you the measure, measure I would like to put on those subsets which can be decided in finitely many tosses, then maybe I can uh, invoke Kara Theodori and then transfer the measure measure on to extend the measure on to a sigma algebra. Now, what is the sigma algebra now? Sigma of F naught, okay. Sigma, we do not know what sigma algebra it is, some sigma algebra, right. So, we can what we will try and do is put a P naught, some pseudo measure on F naught and then use Kara Theodore's theorem and extend the measure on to the sigma algebra generated by F naught. Remember F naught is not a sigma algebra. So, you have to make it a sigma algebra by taking countable unions and so on. Okay. So, here is the program all right. So, I do the following F naught is not a sigma algebra. So, this is done lemma is done. So, I want to define P naught from F naught to 0 1 satisfying P naught of omega equal to 1 and countable additivity on F naught, right. That is what Kara Theodori wants us to do. But what we should initially do is we have to set our P naught to be right on the algebra in the first place, just like we did it on the intervals. We put P naught as 
the length of the interval and then decided we will extend it right. Now, we have to say that if you give me an element of f naught which can be decided let us say in n tosses, I will basically make all these n 2 power n possibilities equally likely that is what I am going to do to correspond to a uniform measure right. Uh, so, we want to define p naught to uh, correspond to uh, fair coin tosses. So, we do as follows let us say, so say say I give you a in f naught ok. So, if a is in f naught, so I want to decide what the probability of some a in f naught is ok. So, if a is in f naught then it must be in yeah it must be in one of the f i's right. Then a is in f i for some i in natural numbers. See you know that if a is in f i it must also be in f i plus 1 and so on right. So, if you want you can put that i for which you can put the smallest i if you want right, but we will see that it does not matter you can take any i ok because f i's are nested increasing right. So, if you find an i you can also find other i's. So, ok never mind. So, a belongs to f i some i. So, if a is in f i then what can you say about the first i bits it must be of a certain form right then a must be written of the a must have a representation a remember that guy a superscript i must belong to oh wait a second sorry uh, omega. So, I must really write omega 1 omega 2 omega i is in a superscript i is not it this is my characterization of f i. So, I am saying that the first i bit should have a certain pattern right it could be any one of the subsets of uh, 2 power n possibilities right this a i is some subset of 0 1 power n 0 1 power i actually right define I am going to now define the measure ok. Next define P naught of A is equal to cardinality of A superscript i over 2 power i. Okay. You see what I am doing. So, this a i will correspond to some pattern among the first i bits. In the example I gave, i was 10 and I was looking at all those possibilities where there were at least 2 heads, remember, right. So, in that case, my i will be 10, right. So, I want to assign the probability of well p naught, which is the pseudo measure as the cardinality of that set. So, what is the cardinality of that set now of the first 10 tosses you want at least 2 heads is what I said. So, it will have 10 choose 2 plus 10 choose 3 plus that will be the cardinality of that set divided by 2 power 2 power 10 in this case. So, that is what I am doing ok. So, I am again couching it in some notate notation, but it is actually very simple. So, so, if for example, to take a very simple example, I am looking at the set of all tosses where the third toss is ahead, ok. Then I will have it, it will be an element of f 3 correct. 
So, I will have 1 by 2 power 3 in the denominator, denominator will be 2 power 3 and here the set of a i s will be there are 4 possibilities right you are fixing the third bit, but first 2 can be anything. So, there are 4 possibilities 4 over 8 half. So, I am basically saying that the probability of some bit being whatever heads or tails is half and I am also saying that if you give me any specific n bit pattern. So, I maybe I tell you that my first 10 tosses should be a very specific string, then there will only be once one such thing here and it will be 1 by 2 power 10 right. So, this is the this is what you would normally call a fair coin, fair coin toss except now there is an infinitely many coin tosses. So, this is perfectly under I mean intuitive intuitive right it is just couched in some notation. So, is this clear? Now, there is one little issue here. So, remember if some a is an f i it is also an element of f i plus 1 and so on right. So, I may for example, choose some i which is not the smallest i then you may ask me oh is this is this measure going to change it would not change come to think of it let us say I take the third coin toss being heads let us say I call it f 4 now it is an f it is an f 3, but it is also an f 4 clearly right. Now, I am looking at 4 strings in which the third bit alone is heads. So, there are 8 possibilities now and the denominator is 16. So, it is again the same as so you can verify that in fact, this is this definition of uh, probability of p naught of a the pseudo measure is independent of whether you actually manage to choose the smallest i or not right. So, you let us say you start define saying ok this is my smallest i, but it does not really matter you can even choose some bigger i this is invariant under choosing bigger i's for example ok. So, this is perfectly well defined uniquely defined ok. So, this is what I want right. Now, I have to verify that p naught of omega what happens to know p naught of omega I have to verify it is 1 right is that true. So, if we look at p naught of omega then what will be my first i bits will be all 2 power i possibilities right. So, it will be 2 power i over 2 power i right. So, my omega will consist of all possible binary strings infinite binary strings therefore, my first i bits can be all possible 2 power i strings. So, p naught of so clearly p naught of omega is 1. Now, there is in order to invoke Kara Theodori you need just one more thing. So, you have an algebra f naught you know that p naught of omega is 1 you just need countable relativity over this f naught right now that is non trivial ok, but it is true ok. So, now you can invoke Kara Theodori and say this p naught can be extended into a unique measure on sigma of f naught ok. So, you can verify uh, p naught of omega equal to 1 this is easy uh, this is 1 p naught is countably additive on f naught this is non trivial it is non trivial, but true ok. Therefore, Kara Theodori holds. So, by Kara Theodori p naught can be uniquely extended to a measure on what omega comma sigma of f naught right. extended to a probability measure p on omega comma sigma of f naught
okay and that's my probability measure that's all there is to it and that probability measure will agree perfectly with p not on this f not sets right so if you ask me under this measure p what is the probability that my 13th toss is at head it will be half right because p not says it's half so p will agree with it except now this p is also defined on sets like e see remember e was never on f not e is the event that there all event tosses are heads let us say this e was not in f not so my p not will not assign any value to it but my p will be defined on why is now why is p defined on e it's a countable intersection of f not sets so this must be e is not in the algebra but it is in the sigma algebra so p not is not defined for e but p is defined for e okay so now what do you think this p of e is Yes. P of e is half. P of e will be zero. Try showing that P of e is zero. So P of e is the P of a countable intersection, right? You have to use continuity of probabilities. Okay. so do i have i'm running out of time so you can write so in this case i'll just put a little box and give you a hint for this p of e equal to p of uh intersection i is equal to 2 4 6 dot 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 ai right so this is like a you can write it as uh, i equal to uh i belongs to 2n or whatever right so you can essentially what you can do maybe you can put i equal to 2i a2i maybe and put i equal to 1 to infinity it's okay same thing now what do you do so this by continuity of probability is limit n tending to infinity probability intersection i equals 1 through n a to y right this is by continuity of probabilities correct there is no nested decreasing business here but this is true by continuity of probabilities now what is that 1 by 2 power n right limit of that is so this is this guy is we are looking at there are certain n n bits have to be heads the probability of that is you know is 1 by 2 power n right so this is uh, so this is 1 by 2 power n so this will be zero so the probability of all even bits being heads is zero okay so that's an example so the, but p not is not defined for e okay but p is defined for e and it's equal to 0 okay i'll stop here